Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to learn how to build your own mobile applications or web apps completely free without code, stay tuned. I'm walking through how to use AppGyver and better understand app outputs. So before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so jumping straight in, if you are not familiar with AppGyver, it is a platform that will allow you at the time of filming this video to create mobile apps completely free without code. I have tons of other tutorials on this on my channel, and you can also check out codelessfix.com for more, as well as different AppGyver templates. Now, jumping straight into the video, we're gonna start off by creating a new app. I'm just calling it new. So what we're going to do with this app, we're going to add in something like a button and try to better understand what logic we can add. Now, again, I have tons of different tutorials that will kind of walk through this in more detail. But if you're trying to do something like, for example, maybe you want to scan a barcode or take a picture, you can drag over whatever it is that you want to be able to do. And then you'll have this node, which is then triggered. So the idea is if you have something like text, when the text is tapped, you can perform any of these actions or you can get additional actions from the marketplace. Now, what you can do from there is really up to you. You have tons of different options and you can actually basically set these up in a sequence, for example, using an if condition. So what we're gonna do just to make this as simple as possible is we're gonna better understand the outputs. So you'll see with this, we have these three little nodes here. So when we select this flow function, you'll see on the right hand side, we have a QR option, a cancel button, and that's basically part of what happens when you select this. So what we're looking for is the outputs. <clears throat> so you'll see the output at port one, port two and port three. And there is more to this, but I do want to go over this very, very quickly. So if you're wanting to see, okay, maybe output one is true, maybe output two is false. So output one, you'll see barcode content, and then you'll see text. Output at port two is basically nothing. Output at port three is the error, and then you'll see it has the error codes. Then it also has message code raw error. So what we can do to better understand this is if you wanted to simply show a message when the first output is triggered, you can connect it to this toast message here. And then when you go to the toast message, you can do output of another node, and then you'll see you can click scan QR or barcode. Now, all you get is this single field, so it would display whatever the content is. But if you decided, you know what, I also want to display the error message, then you can do the same thing, but connect to port three where the error is, and then click output of another node, scan QR code, and now you'll see we have the error, code, message, or raw error. These correspond to what we were previously looking at, error, message, code, raw error. So the idea here is you could show the user really whatever you think they need to see to resolve the issue. So if we click scan QR code, you'll see it's the error. We could show the code, the message, or the raw error. Now, if you want to get even more detailed, you can click here and click formula, and then you can go to output of another node, and you'll see we now have many more options. We have the error code, message, raw error. So you'll see when you click each of these, you'll typically get a general understanding over here as to what is going to be returned, and then you're gonna wanna do your own testing. Now, that's one scenario. Let's go over one more before we kind of close things out. All right, so let's pick one that's a little bit more likely to be used, and that's this take photo option here. So when it's been dragged over, you have the same option because photos are surprisingly complex. So you'll see here the photo file is made up of several other options. You'll see those are indented to the right. And then we have a variety of different error options as well. So just to show how you can make this more complex or not, we're going to drag over a couple of different variables and cover a couple of different possible cases. So one thing you may want to do is you may want to better understand how this function works when this is working on a device. So what we could do first as our first, uh, we'll call it use case. We'll say, okay, when we do this take photo, once it's done, 
I want to see where it's saved. So we can go to properties, output of another node, take photo, and then you'll see path. This will show where it's saved. Or you could choose the name and see what it's named. So if you're better understanding this and how to create an app that works in, uh, let's just say, an Android phone versus an iPhone, you could use this to better understand that. Now, let's say once you've kind of figured things out and you want to do something a bit more realistic, for example, if you haven't seen my video on how to upload images and files, I'll put a link in the description. You can check that out. But the idea is you would need a couple of different outputs from this take photo function. Now, if you decided you wanted to set a variable name, you could choose an app variable and you could set it based on the output of this. So you could make the variable name the name of the picture. And then you could say, after this is done, open a given page. So you can see you can link these in a variety of different ways, and you can do the same thing with the error. Now, the only other thing I want to cover is you'll see this will vary on different options. For example, this alert only has one node, whereas this confirm option has two and take photo has three. So anytime you have questions, you can always check out the outputs here, or you can go over and connect something like a toast message to the output. And then when you go to edit the toast message, you can check the output values here, or you can go to the formula, and then you can always just type in output, and then you'll see the different options and you can use those here and you can see basically what they'll look like on this side as a sample. So I hope this was helpful. And if you ever need to, you can also use your browser's dev tools to kind of investigate this a little bit more and see how it functions in a web browser. Now, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.